What's going on there, YouTube? John from Hot Lap RC. This time we're taking a look at a budget entry, something different. A little 110 scale buggy from Quantum. It's called the Vandal. You can get them at uh, hobbyking.com. I want to say that you can pick this kit up, no motor, no ESC, no radio, for like 75 bucks on their website. If you spend 100 bucks, you get free shipping. And you can get it almost ready to run with the motor and the speed control for like a hundred and then you for another 25 you get this radio for a total of about 125 hours shipped to your door all uh completely ready to run other than uh missing a battery obviously so this is the uh this is the remote this is the radio that it comes with and at first I was a little aggravated because I was like, oh no, not this big eight battery garbage like the old Red Cats. You know, I like all the I like all the features. I like having a dial for everything. But I didn't like the eight battery design. Oh, look at that. Four battery design. So they've gone in and filled this in and taken this out, and it's not an eight battery anymore. Now we got four batteries. And it's it's actually cool because I've always uh, actually liked these uh, red cat style transmitters I just hate it the 8 battery style so 2.4 gigahertz included also comes with a very thin instruction manual I didn't even open it you know how that is uh, you know it comes in this little box here it's got some info so you got the kit we got the ready to run and the almost ready to run I got the RTR and let's see nothing on the bottom side 10 scale four-wheel drive 415 millimeters long, 255 millimeters wide, 142 millimeters high, 275 millimeter wheelbase, I guess in the front, and 280 in the back. It's got 11 to 2 to 1 gear ratio, and it's got some tires on it or whatever. So I think we can get rid of that. All right. So obviously I'm not big on unboxing, so I've already taken it out and take a look at it, but I haven't driven it yet, just for you guys. So you can see it's it is 10 scale. It's not huge. You know, it's not a gigantic. I mean, there's a slash right there, and you can clearly see it's very small compared to like a slash. But overall, it's 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 a, got a nice size for being a buggy. If this was a truck or something, eh, it's a little small for me. But it's just a buggy, so you know, so far I'm I'm not out of the game. Now remember, this is a budget RC, 125 hours ready to run. I mean, how much can you truly complain here? So let's flip it over, let's take a look at the bottom. You can see that motor sticking out here. Got a nice gap here. Now, I guess it's going the wrong way, but I guarantee you you're gonna get junk all up inside here. I'll probably throw some duct tape over that maybe, because that's just like a bad design in my opinion. But that's what you get for $125. Anyway, all plastic chassis, you know, recessed metric styled uh, screws. We have uh, four dog bones. I can see the dog bones there. Four dog bone. The, uh, you know, it actually is, you know, some of them you can take and you can twist all this stuff. And I can't twist this one, so it's pretty solid. You can see that they use a different tire in the front and the back. This one's a bit thinner. This one's a bit thicker. Totally different style treads on them. Uh, this should do fine for what I'm planning on doing with it. And the average person, if you're going to run this on the street... You know, you're going to tear these back tires up in seconds. Uh, but if you're driving on the dirt, you know, they should be more than adequate. I'm not saying that they're, you know, professional type tires, but this isn't really a professional type vehicle. So let's look around to the back here. We do have adjustable shocks. You can see that they are adjustable. So you can move them up and down. They are composite with a aluminum top. A little bit of adjustability here we do have three notches on top two notches on bottom no rear bumper of any sort you can see right out of the box here you see that this spring is messed up you can see that that's already trying to push itself beyond that little lip there so I'm gonna have to fix that before we go out the uh, little spoiler little wing is removable had to put that on and then we go over the front, so again, still no bumper. You know, there's there's this little half of a bumper, you know, that protects the gearbox, but for the most part, there's nothing to protect the wheels. Same thing up front, same type of suspension. 
We do have some options again as to where we're going to mount everything. It looks like we have three on the bottom and three on top. And uh, steering seems to be relatively crisp. Sounds like a Metal Gear servo to me, which would be great for this small little buggy. So let's dive in. The body, the body is virtually nothing. I mean, it's like they took a little piece of Plexan and just went, boop, there we go, we're done. It's very simple, very plain, very cheap. And, uh, you know, it's almost non-existent. It just, it's just whatever, I guess, right? We, again, our price tag here. You know, the wheels are glued, which is good. Yellow dishes, you're not going to get mud all flying up in there. Let's take the body off, take a look. I mean, you really can't hate on this thing that bad for being $125. It's, you know, like I said, there you go. It's virtually nothing. Look at that. <laughs> so, it's a real RC car, guys and gals. You know, it's got a normal battery tray, which will fit your standard style, you know, battery. It's obviously not going to fit any kind of a long pack. It's just too long, it looks like. But your shorter packs, it's going to be perfectly fine. Obviously, you can't go with a really tall pack either because of the design. But then again, you don't want an 8,000 ma tall pack in here. It's going to completely throw this buggy off. You know, it, you just need a, a normal battery pack. It's more than sufficient for this. So it does come with a brushless motor. It's a 3652. Can't really see all the rest, but it is, uh, it's a 3250 KV motor. Looks like a nice little pinion gear in there. I don't like how this is all open. It'd be nice if they close this up somehow with a little plastic shroud. You can see down inside there, but overall, it's fine. I mean, you're just bashing with it. It's cheap. You got a little uh, 2 3S LiPo, 6 volt. I don't see any numbers on it or anything like that, but a little, you know, cheap little brushless speed controller. Nothing crazy. I'm not expecting crazy here. It already looks better than a Ghoul RC product because it's not a 380 motor. It looks like it actually is maybe a 540 motor. What we got here's the servo. K Power P0300 analog server. I mean, I could be wrong. It sounds metal gear to me, but who knows? Could be plastic gears. Does have a slipper clutch you can see inside there. So you can adjust the clutch on this one which is a great feature, or even a lot of more expensive vehicles don't have that nowadays. And it comes stock with, uh, I've got them over here, I cut them off. I think they're XT60s, right? What they are, guys? I don't use these. Yeah, XT60. So this XT60 I cut off, I put on my XT150s, and uh, that way we can run. So that's not what that's gonna come with, it's gonna come with an XT60. So the speed control is mounted there. The, re the receiver is actually mounted right on top. Not very water resistant, you know, in a very water resistant location, but you know, just don't trash it in the water or maybe get like a bubble, uh, like a balloon or something to go over it. You know, power switch is mounted in a really odd position because I would have mounted it on top of the servo because then you could at least bend this up and turn it on and off. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. It's like a, it's like, ha ha, you can't turn me off kind of thing. Uh, not only that, but what is the window clear for? I mean, I, I think it's pretty neat. I like the side windows being clear because then I can put my, you know, my transmitter for, you know, for the lap, for the lap monitor inside there. That's cool. But the front one's like, hey, check out all these wires and stuff. I don't, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Oh my, okay. So anyway, moving on, you do see some aluminum pieces here and there. There's not a ton of uh, metal in here, but, you know, it it does a job. One of the big worries that I hear on people are, you know, that parts are, you know, hard to find. Well, they're not really because Hobby King sells the parts. So as long as you're willing to go to Hobby King, you get the parts. Uh, shipping might end up killing you if you keep nickel and diming one piece at a time, but I have so many RCs that... You know, if it breaks, I'll, I'll sit it down for a little bit and eventually I'll get back to it. Or maybe you have to order from Hobby King. That's where I get my connectors from and stuff. And then I'll just throw these parts on there, you know, or I'll buy a few extra. Since I know that this piece might break, I'll buy three of them. That way it cuts down on my shipping costs. Uh, so that was one of the concerns that people had. Uh, they do have, you do have to watch out their website because 
this kit I, I would have probably just bought a, a regular red cat radio on ebay for like 25 bucks and not giving them the extra 30 i paid for this one from the almost ready to run to the ready to run but if you get rid of the radio and you just buy it like this suddenly it has to ship from like hong kong and now the shipping rate goes boop up the up the up to the ceiling and the kit version also seemed to only want to come from Hong Kong. So yeah, don't get me wrong, it's 75 bucks. But with the shipping, it ends up being way more from Hong Kong. So I just went with the free shipping, ready to run for 125 hours. How the hell can you beat it? I did notice. Check out how crappy they put these stickers on. I mean, it's like really just garbage. I don't know if you can see how horrible that is. <laughs> I'll probably just end up pulling them off. Not a big deal, but just things like that amuse me sometimes. But, you know, as with any vehicle, you know, oh, it's going to break as soon as you start buying as soon as you start driving. It's absolutely garbage. It's junk. Yada, I, I've heard everything about these. Uh, the hobby shops hate them. You know, there's just so much about it. So I kind of felt at that point I had to buy it just to find out why everybody hates it so much. Is it unwarranted or is it true? What are you doing with it? If you're jumping off a building... Obviously, it's not going to do that. It's $125. Oh, it's going to break. Yeah, really? Um, last time I checked, this is $800. That's broken. Fifth run I rode on it. Um, this breaks every single time I go out. The Armor Outcast, every time I go out and break, and I, it breaks. And I'm, not, I'm babying it. The granite, Armor Granite down there, that's broken. Uh, what else is broken right now? Uh, so you get my point, though. They all break. They all break, they all have their issues, and as long as you're willing to deal with some BS sometimes, you know, that's, uh, that's where it comes down to. What I look at is how hard is it to fix the parts that keep breaking? If the A-arm keeps breaking, but it only takes 10 seconds to fix, is it really a big deal? You know, obviously if it's breaking every second, then it is, but if it's once in a while, now if it's like a gear inside the, the box, which all this has to be taken apart, and you gotta take this apart, and it, and then a week later it breaks again, then no, I put it back together again and it's probably gonna be a shelf queen or it's gonna get sold because I can't deal with stuff like that. But if it's minor, what can you do? So anyway, that's my quick little look at review of this Vandal from Quantum. I got a Hobby King and I bought it myself, 125 hours. I didn't, they didn't give it to me, they didn't contact me. Uh, I was just curious. I was looking for a 10 scale buggy and I don't want to spend 300 and some dollars on like a Tamiya or something like that yet. I'm just doing some backyard RC. Uh, everybody seems to want to do the short course trucks, my kids, my friends. So this is really just for me to have a good time and see if I can get it to jump a little further. So I'm going to put this, uh, this little lap monitor transmitter in here. We're going to take it out on the track in a little bit and uh, see how it runs on 2S and 3S, of course. If you follow the channel, you'll see, obviously, all of the action. So, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.